Hi, this is Jeff. Uh, welcome to the next uh, web blog focusing on AZN menus. Um, this is actually a topic I've written a lot about, I've blogged about, I've done webinars on, but I thought I'd just do a quick web blog um, to illustrate this concept in case this is new to you. Uh, if you are in the midst of an R12 upgrade, um, there's some tips here that uh, I'll give you on enhancing your security. So first I'll talk a little, just briefly on what are AZN menus. Um, and then we'll go into details on uh, how what the risks are and what some recommendations are. So I pull up a couple menus here. You can see I've got AP Navigate GUI, GL Super User, this Navigator menu associated with Application Developer, and AR Navigate GUI. These are all standard menus that uh, are seated and delivered with Oracle's applications. And as they um, make enhancements to the applications, they are patching um, and as patches are applied, they're they are inserting various different standard functionalities in these menus. One of the things that happened, I think around version 11.5.3, so it's been seven or eight years probably since they, this happened, they introduced these AZN menus. Um, I'll show you uh, what they do, but I wanted to show you four examples here uh, where AZN menus were introduced and they were inserted into standard menus. So if you're using these menus as base menus to develop your custom responsibilities or you're using any standard responsibilities which use these menus, um, these would have been inserted into your user's uh, security model without necessarily you knowing it when a patch is being applied. So that's what I call one of the elements of what I call upgrade risk. Um, so here you see the AZR PR payables menu. Here you see AZN PR uh, receivables menu. Um, for GL, you see one there. And for um, application developer here, um, it's uh, AZN main menu. This, for some reason, my system's frozen here. So um, let's see here. There it is, AZN main menu right here. So the uh, AZN menus, and I'll show you some examples here. I'll just show you one example. It's a series of functions, and all it does is group a bunch of functions together that are applicable for a particular business process. So this is, uh, I believe these were introduced for business process accelerators, uh, more of their feature for the bid market um, back in, I think, 2005-ish. And uh, the, the intention was, and as I'll show you, um, to provide a graphical user interface of a business process flow to help accelerate implementation of certain modules. So when an ASEAN menu is evident within a master menu, um, what you see is this processes tab um, that otherwise doesn't exist if an ASEAN menu isn't on that menu for the related responsibility. And what this does is show a graphical um, depiction of a process flow, the care to pay process. It shows things like requisitions happening, purchase orders being approved, um, blah, 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 receipt happening, paying supplier, so on and so forth. Um, and then there's other, you know, uh, phases to this element process that, that are in here. So close payables period, you know, it shows you some examples. So what it allows you to do through this process is instead of going to the navig to this function screen and navigating to it, you can navigate directly to a form, the form function underneath it, by double clicking on this icon. So this shows pay supplier. Um, if you're trying to get to that point, if you're at that point in the business process, you click on pay supplier and it launches a, a form underlying with this icon. Um, it's taking a little bit here, but it launches, in this case, the quick payments or the single payments form. So generally, uh, when I see the processes tab and ASEAN menus, it's usually a sign of significant um, segregation duties violations because this pretty much gives you access to everything within a within a given business process it gives you a lot of functionality within there this you know it, it gives you the ability in this case to enter requisitions do uh, purchase orders with it or against those requisitions um, do receipts pay suppliers and it would give you access potentially to things that you wouldn't have um, within the business process uh, or the, the security definitions in the functions tab. So generally, end users don't know what exists, and it, it's it's often a symptom of 
um, segregation duties violations. I've got a small little white paper here, or a small little article I'm going to release. Um, here is some screenshots in here. This is an excerpt from the menu, um, or an extract, and then here shows some other ASEAN menus. Um, and then here's a list of ASEAN menus that exist in this 12.1.2 environment that I'm looking at, which is a, 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 an environment hosted by Solution Beacon. So based on my experience, most users aren't aware of these, um, of the processes tab. Uh, it just kind of magically appeared at some point, and it's, it kind of refers to what I uh, often talk about as upgrade risk. Um, so what I would suggest uh, is a kind of a two-phase process. If you're in the midst of upgrading or if you're not upgrading for a while, what I would recommend is going through to your custom responsibilities and just excluding those using a um, menu exclusion. Uh, so you just go through, do a, a menu exclusion or exclusion type of menu, do a query and percent, ASEAN percent, and you're going to get a list of ASEAN menus associated with that. Um, be aware that there are cases where, like an application developer's the ASEAN main menu, which gets you access to all ASEAN menus, um, which you may be able to exclude in that case, by just uh, all of them by excluding just the ASEAN main menu. But you may find more than one ASEAN menu within that, depending upon what the the main menu for the responsibility has. So that's phase one. If you're um, if you're in the middle of a security uh, engagement project like an upgrade to R12, um, what I recommend is it is essentially mitigating risk, mitigating some of your upgrade risk in general, um, but specifically uh, risk of things like ASEAN menus being inserted. So there's kind of three ways to do it. This is a little bit of a security design 101, but you could. Um, build a new custom menu that kind of mirrors the other uh, standard menu. So the, the the base menu I looked at, we looked at a few minutes ago, was the AP Navigate GUI. You can make a custom menu called JTH Navigate GUI or ABC Company Navigate GUI and copy all those submenus and functions into that menu. Um, certainly that would mean if an ASEAN menu is being, or another menu is being inserted in, the AP Navigate GUI one, which is the standard one that's seeded with the application, it's not going to insert that same function or, or new submenus into this custom menu. So that certainly mitigates some of the risk. The problem is, as you're seeing, these all these submenus are all still standard menus, and there could be new functions or new submenus inserted into one of these other submenus. So the second approach <clears throat> would be um, building a more scaled-down version of that that's based upon the role. So let's say your manager for AP didn't have, um, within their role definition, didn't manage any setups. So whereas the setup menu here, AP Setup 12, is in the standard menu, you exclude that out here. Um, often there's a case where there would be some setups that they'd maintain, some transactional setups as opposed to foundational setups. You may do a custom menu and insert some of that. Um, so this is kind of the second approach. The third approach would be, um, making sure that all the submenus and all the submenus within those submenus uh, are in essence custom, completely customizing all security. That's the only way to really to completely mitigate upgrade risk. Um, I am comfortable in some cases uh, of using some standard submenus where I understand the risks associated with that and where I understand um, what typically is historically has happened with those submenus, and I understand what is the intention of that role. So, for example, if you've got an AP manager, and the role will always be maintaining it, um, anything to do with invoices for data entry, um, releasing holds, all those type of things, um, then maybe using this submenu may be appropriate. But if it's uh, if it's an if it's not a complete uh, from a business design perspective, if we're not going to completely use everything within that submenu, then I would rather see you use, as an example, a custom submenu that identifies the functions and submenus they would need within a voice entry process. So that's a little bit about security design. I can't get into security design in a lot of detail, but I just wanted to go through AZN menus. Um, and this is a topic, I think that there's a lot of organizations that still have uh, some risk in. I've, I often find AZN menus um, still out there in a production environment, even though in some cases organizations have gone through and done some work in ASEAN menus. So hopefully this blog is helpful. Uh, if you have any questions on this topic or anything else, please 
contact me at this information. My email address is jhare at erpra.net. So it's jhare at erpra.net. Thanks and have a great day.